and thank you for joining us on Nationwide on the Network 70 NPA. I'm Nadja Atitijani. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed the conviction that Nigerians are not regretting his administration's back-to-land policy as the focus on agriculture is paying off handsomely. This was while receiving an audience the former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Atu Haile Mariam Boshi. The report will come in our subsequent bulletin. Now, the Department of State Services has advised Sunday Ibuho to present himself to security agencies as soon as possible, as he will not have any hiding place. The summons was made when the DSS paraded 12 of his guards for stockpiling arms in an effort to undermine public order. Francis Form reports. The arrests and seizures are no doubt a confirmation of a grand plan by Ibo and his cohorts to wage a violent insurrection against the Nigerian state. Acting on a credible intelligence, a joint team of security operatives approached the residents of Igbo at Soka in Ibadan. The team were allegedly attacked by his suspected guards, armed with AK-47 guns. Alert foreign missions and licensing authorities within and outside Nigeria about this development and the possibility that Ibo could declare some of his personal permit and identity cards missing in order to seek their replacement. But this will be the end of uh, his uh, shenanigans. Soon, he will not have a hiding place. His strength will sure fail him and the law will catch up with him. Items recovered from the suspects include seven AK-47 rifles, three pistol guns, 5,000 rounds of 7.62 millimeters ammunition, charms, amongst others. Five of the AK-47 assorted rifles recovered from the suspects are suspected to be those collected by Igboho and his men from the Nigerian Customs and Immigration Personnel at ED Iroko in Ogun State. Frank says from News. Similarly, organizers of the planned Odua Nation mega rally slated for July 3rd in Lagos must shelve the plan and steer clear of any part of the metropolis. The Lagos State Commission of Police, Hakim Odumosu, stated this while fielding questions from journalists on the proposed rally in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports. Police, Hakim Odumosu said, based on intelligence gathered by the police command, Disgruntled elements have perfected plans to infiltrate the ranks of the protesters and cause mayhem during the proposed Yoruba Nation mega rally stated to hold simultaneously in 18 locations across the metropolis. The State Police Command hereby warns that no rally will be allowed under whatever guise in any part of the states. So the command therefore warns the organizers and their followers against staging the planned rally and stay clear of streets of Lagos. He hinted that information at the disposal of the police command also revealed that a group led by one Elewi Omo, a transport union leader in New York State, is also warming up to unleash reprisal attack on Sunday Igbo's group to avenge the death of one of his followers allegedly killed by Igbo's group in Lagos. CPO Dumosu therefore warned that the command will not fold its hands and allow a repeat of 2020 violent NSAS protest, which led to massive destruction of lives and property in Lagos State. The command will not be cajoled by the so-called organizers that the rally will be peaceful. You have a right to protest, but the time is not right. In Lagos, Musa Tolian, NTA News. The Abia Police Command has paraded suspected armed robbers and kidnappers along with recovered firearms and other valuables. The State Police Commissioner, Janet Abadi, vowed to rid the state of criminal elements, advising others in the business to relocate as they will be matched fire for fire. Delight Gideon reports. State Police Command said the armed robbery suspects who are also kidnappers were arrested in two separate operations. The first six-man gang has five of its members from Obiomangwa local government area of Abia State, while the driver is from Akwaibun State. ASBs recovered from them were AK-47 rifle with 25 life ammunition, a pump-action gun, 10 life cartridges, and force-waging jetta car. 
the second gang of two members from Abia and Ibuni states, allegedly kidnapped one Ozoman Dubese in his Lesor Street 30 vehicle and eventually killed him after collecting a ransom of 700,000 Naira from his family. The media went with seven ATM cards, having forcefully obtained their pin, robbed a former chief judge of Abia State at Aba. No, nah, just a friend. It's my friend. No, just call me for food. Tell me, say, may I come out? May we go drink? I don't know, say, nah, I rob him. Where they go? I was, though I was involved, I will not doubt it. But as in, I was led by some bad friends. After, after today, I'm giving my life to Christ. I will not do it again. The suspect will soon appear in court. In Omwaya, Delight Gideon, NTA News. Meanwhile, professing speakers at an international summit on the peace and unity of Nigeria say professing peace is not enough, but taking practical steps is the way to go. The summit convened in Abuja with the theme promoting peace within our borders. Benny Adams reports. We all hope for a state of harmony across our borderlands. In every crisis around the world, children suffer the most. Little Halima understands what it means to live in constant fear. So also is Bulama Muhammad, who barely understands the dividends of peace in the last 10 years. Ugo Chuku, on the other hand, cannot call anywhere else home but the north but feels threatened by the cacophony of separation. They are all saying, enough of the talk shops, it's time to act. There is something Northern Nigeria brings to the table, there is something Southern Nigeria brings to the table, and if you take, it, take that away, you are no longer talking about Nigeria. So can we have more of our statesmen coming together to talk about peace, consensus, and development? No one here should be reminded of the circumstances of his death. The host, Stephen Midala, a victim of insurgency, says beyond the three-day fiscal meeting, a website is available for the peace dialogue to continue. He calls on all aggrieved persons across the country to join in the conversation for sustainable peace and economic prosperity of the country. If you are a member of the Boko Haram, anywhere you are, and you can hear my voice, if you are not afraid, please come here. I can assure you of your safety. Come and tell us your view on how to live together because we are right. Nigeria cannot continue like this. Growing up in Nigeria in the 80s, I used to have friends from all over the Federation, from Benin, from Lagos, from Patakot, and they follow me to Gerikida for Christmas. The conversation is centered on the theme, promoting peace within our borders. In Abuja. Benny Adams, NTA News. And to poverty alleviation, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saidia Umar Farouk, has reiterated the federal government's determination to alleviate poverty among Nigerians through various social intervention programs. She said this at a stakeholders' meeting on the National Homegrown Schools Feeding Program held in Gusau Zamfara State. Haliru Muhammad reports. Meeting with stakeholders on the homegrown school feeding program by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, was aimed at reviewing the challenges, successes and prospects of the social intervention in Zamfara State. The minister who commended Zamfara State Government and focal persons for supporting the program said the federal government is committed to getting as many Nigerians as possible out of poverty through social interventions. Some officials of the program who welcomed the meeting called for full implementation of resolutions and recommendations made towards the effective running of the program in the state for better results. In the meantime, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has distributed engagement letters and some devices to trained independent monitors who will closely monitor all federal government's social intervention programs. This is uh, a program that uh, kicked off in February, where these selected monitors uh, we are trained, and in April this year, we also started the distribution uh, of the engagement letters and the devices for these people to move to the field 
and monitor the programs. And for a State Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, Faika Ahmed, thanked the federal government for initiating people-oriented programs while calling on beneficiaries to take advantage of them. In Gusau, Halir Muhammad Umar, NTA News. Similarly, to ensure that the national social investment programs of the Buhari-led administration achieve the desired objectives in Ebonyi State, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saidia Umar Farouk, has flagged off the distribution of engagement letters and tablets to trained independent monitors in Abakaliki. Kanayo Kuru witnessed the flag off and now reports. Monitors of the National Social Investment Program in Ebony State will not only ensure that the beneficiaries justify their stipends, but report some of the challenges of the program to the appropriate authority for proper action. Some of the independent monitors, while thanking federal government for finding them worthy to serve, pledge to justify the confidence reposed on them. I'm going to make sure that those that are benefiting from it get what they're supposed to get. I will discharge the duties given to me with faithfulness. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, who was represented, speak for them on the essence of involving monitors in the program. <laughs> Essentially, it will help us deliver our mandate and contribute to the vision of Mr. President to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Governor David Omahenry, presented by Mrs. Anne Aligwe, expressed optimism that the 56 independent monitors trained and engaged in the state will deliver as scheduled, appealed for more federal government initiative in the interest of Ebony people. Dragging force, pushing to make sure that. The independent monitors in the state are expected to work within a period of one year. In Abakaliki, Kana Yokuro, NTA News. To climate matters now, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has presented to the public a document on disaster risk management implications of 2021 and the annual outlook of seasonal climate predictions as part of deliberate efforts to holistically manage any emerging disaster which may occur. The Director General of the agency, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, who presented the document, promised to change the narrative of disaster management for good. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. Every year, flood comes with its peculiarity, and as such, the dynamics of the approach by the National Emergency Management Agency is usually set in motion. The 2021 flood outlook, as released by the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency, indicate that 121 local government areas in 27 states, including the federal capital territory, Abuja, are expected to experience high probability of flood risks. These working documents, as presented by the NEMA DG, is a documented guidance strategy towards managing flood in 2021. The document contains recommendations aimed at guiding decision makers at national, state and local government as well as community levels to avert adverse consequences, mitigate disaster risk, safeguard food security. So this collaborative effort between the two agencies is quite commendable. The release of the 2021 Disaster Risk Management Implementation Report marks the beginning of a series of events throughout the rainy season, including emergency coordination meetings to review response and mitigation strategies. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliyaku, NTA News. The United Nations has put together a panel that will review the operational standard of digital media, which will be shared with all member states for safe operation and usage of the new media. The United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed said this when she was hosted by the Minister of Information and Culture in Abuja at Debola Brooksland Sunday reports. The new media 
which no doubt has been a blessing to mankind in the area of information dissemination, has also come with its negative impacts, such as hate speech and fake news. Hosting the Deputy UN Scribe, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed said, fake news and hate speech have been the tools used by enemies of the states who are out to cast aspersions on the achievements of the present administration. We've discovered recently about 476 online publications that are devoted daily to promoting fake news about this administration and about Nigeria. Despite this, the government has continued to make a lot of, you know, progress, be it in railway, be it in roads or roads, I mean rails or bridges. On the suspension of Twitter in Nigeria, Lai Mohammed said, it's for the good of the country. And that nobody will use his platform to promote insurgency or promoting security. And this is the understanding we crave from the international community. Young people, uh, this is the way they communicate. Uh, with every right, there is an obligation. Um, and I think that what we have to do is to better educate. Uh, we have to set norms and standards which will allow an enabling environment where communication can happen in a way that does no harm. For Amina Mohammed, an amicable resolution is key and the UN is ready to support the ministry in the actualization of its set goals. We have a platform called Verified uh, because we were alarmed at the hate speech that was going around the world. Um, and maybe we can share with you how we came about uh, putting that framing in place and the UN here uh, can add uh, to the solutions that you're looking for uh, to balance this equation. Amina Mohammed, who urged media practitioners to play within the rule, described free media and freedom of speech as the software that explains how people can invest in any country. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Let's now take more reports with Adiola in Lagos. The petroleum industry bill has suffered several setbacks over the years in previous assemblies, with its passage finally by the night assembly, what is its importance and profit to an average Nigerian? Annie Daniels will tell us. The petroleum industry bill journey began in year 2000 with various administrations working for its passage. It's passed by the Ninth Assembly, energy experts say, is a welcome development. That at this time, the uh, bill or the jinx uh, about the bill, passage of the bill had been broken. And this was uh, the way the presidency put it. You know, the presidency was highly elated that at last the National Assembly passed it. It's now left to the operators of the and the, uh, both in the private and the public sector to make the best of, uh, of the bill. It's going to bring in the kind of investments that will actually add to the, to the fortune the economic uh, changes we will expect in the country. These energy experts say the bill will put an end to bureaucratic bottlenecks. If the system is brought such that we have so abundance of it in the country, yeah, where the demand and the supply will almost be at par or probably supply will even be much more than demand. It becomes competitive. The Ninth Assembly also pegs operational costs for host communities at 3% and the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation is to be unbundled. The bill is expected to be scheduled for third reading and final passage and afterwards referred to the president for assent. In Lagos, Ani Daniels, NTA News. Now, the ramp connecting Ijora to Akbongbo end of the Eco Bridge in Lagos will be closed by midnight Friday, 2nd July 2021. This, according to the Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, Olukayo de Popola, is to allow for repair works on the expansion joints linking the two ramps around Ikmori. Adeni Yitaiwo reports. In just four weeks, about 35% of the repair work proposed for Eco Bridge have been completed as three out of the five expansion joints between Akpompo and Alaka end of the bridge have been fixed. Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, 
Onukawadi Pupola is happy with the progress and optimistic that the rehabilitation will be delivered ahead of schedule. You have seen the, uh, the, the expansion joints that are in place and you have seen the bearing that will replace. That's to tell you that the contractor uh, will deliver this job before the 10 weeks that we uh, said we are going to work on this close and then open it to the traffic. The Jora ramp conveying vehicles from Apapa inbound Alaka Stadium will however be closed effective midnight Friday to make this happen. All the vehicles that are coming from Ijora, they meet at a point with the vehicle coming from Agbegba. So the expansion joint after that uh, point is what we want to now replace. So as a result of that, the two bridges will now be affected. We have to close it today so we can tomorrow start lifting. Everything is ready. You know, we don't close unless we are ready. During the closure, vehicles from Ejora are expected to use the coasting ramp and navigate through Ikmori to connect the stadium road. Meanwhile, Work has not stopped under the bridge as engineers are replacing bearings around expansion joints. This is the Ekpori end of the Eco Bridge where repair work is currently going on on expansion joints. What is happening behind me is what the engineers call pier jacketing. Pier jacketing is an attempt to thicken the pier which is bearing the weight of the deck upon which we have vehicles moving. The pace of work is however being slowed down by activities of commercial motorcyclists who use the bridge and destroy ongoing work on expansion joints after forcefully removing barricades. The Eco Bridge was first constructed in 1975. In Lagos, Adeni Itaiwo, NTN News. We're done from, from Lagos for now, but Amina and Kaduna will take the baton when we return from this break. Green yields are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mohamed Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Welcome to Kaduna. 
efforts have been scaled up using modern technology to boost dairy production for both local consumption and exports, in addition to increasing the sector's contribution to the nation's gross domestic products. Adamu Sunday reports that towards the end, a pilot dairy production program under the Raw Materials and Development Council has been inaugurated in Kaduna. Records available suggest that Nigeria loses $1.6 million on milk importation annually, which helps in depleting the nation's foreign reserve. Despite the nation's potentials in animal husbandry, which, if properly annexed, is enough to address shortfall in local demand and export. Experts are determined to reverse the trend as they come up with a technology-driven process that will boost milk production in the country by improving local breed of cattle through the artificial insemination of high-breed semen. It will produce a new breed, which will be producing milk three times than the old breed. Abubakar Omar, a beneficiary of the initiative, is optimistic of the multiplier effects of the program. The milk our cattle usually produce is very small. But with this artificial insemination, the quantum of milk we are going to be producing will increase. The scheme was launched at a pastoralist-dominated community in Kubo local government area to be replicated in identified herders communities in the country. In the next two years, when this inseminated animal, their offspring will come, because that is the improved breed we are looking at, then that very uh, female cattle will be able to have enough milk that will far exceed the indigenous ones. It's time for us to do away with the way we manage our cattle, our cows for production. For effective milk preservation, a solar chiller was donated to the community. It is expected that in the foreseeable future, Kaduna State will become the highest milk producer in the country and the likes of Abubakar won't forget his gesture in a hurry. In Kaduna, Adamu Sunday, NTA News. The war against drug abuse is recording success in Jigao State, with communities getting involved in the sensitization efforts against the societal ill. This is manifested as a non-governmental organization takes such campaign to Jahun, where 50 drug addicts renounce the practice. Ryan Belogunda reports. Jigawa is one of the northern states identified by drug law enforcement agents with high rate of youths being engaged in drugs and other substances abuse. The situation has prompted for joint effort between NDLA and various communities to reverse the negative trend. The gathering is a town hall meeting held in Jahun town to sensitize people on the dangers of taking illicit drugs. The good news is that 50 youths have changed for good and currently undergoing rehabilitation in Duse. Our NGO is on to fighting against drug abuse. This is why we always go in hand, hand in hand with the organization in order to get a profitable result as per the uh, fight against drug abuse is concerned. Educate them, we at least sensitize them on the danger inherent in trafficking, abuse, and uh, associating or relating with any substance of abuse. The traditional institution is playing important role here in the campaign against the use of illicit drugs which many described as succeeding. From Duse, Ibrahim Bellagunda, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Najatu in Abuja. Welcome back to our Abuja studios. Now, the report of President Buhari hosting the former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Atu Haile Mariam, Atu Haile Mariam Boshe, is ready. State House correspondent Adam Usambo has the details. The former Ethiopian Prime Minister Ato Hele Mariam Boshe is in Nigeria on the auspices of Alliance for Green Revolution, working to promote the development of agriculture in 16 African countries. He congratulated President Muhammad Buhari for the achievements attained in Nigeria under his watch, especially in agriculture, saying his organization wants to champion the Nigerian policy at the continental level. The former Prime Minister is of the view that Africa should have a common voice on food self-sufficiency as it is capable of feeding the globe. He said if anything has to change on the continent, it must start with Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari told the former Ethiopian leader that his administration's back-to-land policy was not only deliberate but most ideal as petroleum could no longer sustain the country 
particularly with fluctuating prices. Today, as the president explained, Nigerians eat what they grow, and the country has stopped importation of many food products. Agriculture, he also said, helps the country to generate employment opportunities for those in need, especially the youth. Already, the president maintains some people are even leaving the offices to go back to the land, and so far, there are no regrets whatsoever. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Generation of employment and welfare improvement in oil and gas host communities are a few of the desired results from federal government measures aimed at developing the oil and gas free zones. The Chairman House of Representatives Committee on Commerce, Femi Fakeye, made this known during a facility tour of some free zones in One River State. Gabriel Amoniki reports. Chairman House Committee on Commerce, Femi Fakaya said the two day working visit is to assess the synergy, capacity, and activities of oil and gas free zones in Nigeria. Most of the companies we visited are alive to their responsibility to their host communities. We have seen stadia built, schools built, and roads that are being uh, built all the time. And we have even seen and written on roads that they have. Uh, been able to build from their own resources just to be a blessing to their communities. Managing Director Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority Omana Okon Omana stated that as part of new paradigm shift, Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority is working to expand investment opportunities for oil and gas businesses through new projects. Monitor the performance of our budget as the Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority and to also see how the free zones are doing, how they are impacting on the economy. Uh, and uh, I must say that uh, it's been a fruitful visit. High point was the facility tour of each zone. The zones visited were Intel, Notori, amongst others. Some of the oil companies' executives speak on their challenges. When you're talking about containers or bulk cargoes, um, the road network is, is, is the major challenge. So we're hoping the committee will go back uh, and mention that the infrastructure challenges that you have around these areas are improved. The principal law that established OPSTA has been amended at a National Assembly to strengthen the authority for greater operational capacity and efficiency. Import Hackers, Gabriel Amunike, NTN News. Similarly, the federal government of Nigeria is expanding windows of opportunities for youth and women to be self-reliant. This development is as a result of the establishment of skills acquisition centers and classroom blocks in collaboration with the Gombe state government. Emmanuel Akila reports. A moment of joy to the youths and women of Gombe State for the establishment of a center by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals and the Gombe State Government to provide them a platform for innovation that will change their lives for better. Indeed, the Nigerian government has remained committed to the attainment of SDG, which also align perfectly with the governor objective of President Muhammad Buhari administration, which is economy, fight against corruption and security. For Gombe State, the coming of the center is an impetus to its dreams of industrialization. While coming here, you saw happiness, you saw joy, and you saw the passion with which they want to utilize this place. And that we shall keep and sustain so that uh, by, inshallah, the end of this channel, our young men and women would have acquired the skills that they need to advance the course of their lives. The youths are happy that the government is lifting them out of poverty. This has brought progress to us in Gombe State, and we are happy about it. We shall learn trade from here that will help us so that we can support our families. The center is named after the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Muhammad. This skills acquisition is for young people, it's for women. It is not only an education that one wants, but when there is not a job, if you yourself are trained to get the job from the market, from the opportunities of your state, you will not be idle. The skills acquisition center and a block of classrooms are designed and equipped in such a way that theories are put into practice for immediate results in Gombe. Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. 
securing lives. Sorry, we joined Fatima rather in Makudi for our next set of reports. And welcome to Makudi. Bainway State Government has demonstrated commitment to boost food production in the state by flagging off sale and distribution of tons of assorted fertilizers to farmers. Governor Samuel Otum, who performed the ceremony, cautioned those in charge of the distribution process against shortchanging farmers. Charles Abba reports. Bainway State farmers have continued to benefit from subsidy of farm impulse like fertilizers by the state government to ensure high yields of agricultural produce. Lawrence Agbe and Penda Bernard are cassava farmers who describe the flag off of the sale and distribution of fertilizers by the state government for the 2021 cropping season as timely. Fertilizer can help a lot because it can make my cassava can big. If there's no fertilizer, the cassava won't grow well. Commissioner for Agriculture, Timothy J. said, the ministry will now renege in its reserve to scaling up efforts of encouraging farmers to achieve bumper harvest to ensure food security and economic development. So I would like to solicit the maximum cooperation of the farmers, the fertilizer vendors, and security agencies. Governor Samuel Otom explained that 18 out of 32 trucks of variety of fertilizers, including urea, MPK, and inorganic ones for this year's cropping season, have been delivered. The urea will be sold for 6,000 uh, naira. The cost of purchase of this urea fertilizer is 12,000 naira. Why a litre of organic fertilizer will be sold to farmers at the subsidized rate of 2,000 naira. The governor expressed optimism that with this deliberate effort of the state government to boost food production, Benway will continue to maintain its status as food basket of the nation. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. In preparation for the national census, which requires the states be demarcated into sizable enumeration areas, the National Population Commission in Makudi, the Benue State Capital, says the commission has started phase 15 of the exercise out of the 17 phases. Sandra Dowese Akeme examines the success and challenges of the exercise so far in Makudi Metropolis. The enumeration and demarcation is an exercise that is always carried out by the National Population Commission ahead of the population census, with its advantages not limited to population census only. This strategy, the Federal Commissioner of the Commission, Patricia Kupchi, says the exercise will grant the Commission easy identification of locations, persons, and houses during the national census, as well as for policy planning and implementation by the federal government. We are breaking down the local governments into smaller units where if census were to occur tomorrow, you would send a pair of enumerators and we go to a place all the physical attributes are taken. The state director, National Population Commission, Mr. Stephen Semende, says despite the security threat in most of the local government areas, the Benway State Government has been working round the clock to ensure the safety of the field officers. From reports, we know everybody knows that we have uh, serious security threats in Kasnala, in uh, Okum. But there's restriction on movement. Uh, with my, you can't use uh, motorcycles in those areas. We look at that as another serious challenge. Moving around the metropolis to monitor the exercise, some of the demarcators shared their experiences.
the responses have not been too good, especially in um, fenced uh, buildings. Most times the respondents don't uh, attend to us on time. The trekking, that is number one, is very tedious. Authorities therefore appealed to parents to comply with birth registration of their children at the National Population Commission. In Makudi, Sandra Dewisi Akeme, NTA News. And that report con concludes our contribution from Makudi. Nationwide continues in Ibadan with Lare after the break. Sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Finally, Euro 2020 is here. Enjoy all the matches live on Star Times for only 1,700 naira monthly or 160 naira per day. Recharge now to enjoy all the matches. Watch Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal, Mbappe of France, Lukaku of Belgium, and other top European football stars. No matter where you are, Star Times is here for you. You can enjoy all these matches on your mobile phone. Just download Star Times on app on your phone to watch all the matches for 1,000 Naira monthly or 400 Naira weekly. Recharge today with 1,700 Naira monthly or 160 Naira daily. That's right, you heard me. On Star Times, you can watch all the matches with monthly subscription of 1,700 Naira or daily subscription of 160 Naira. Terms and conditions apply. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. This withdrawal will take place under this administration. Well, I don't want you to <laughs> conclude on okay. me. All right, so <laughs> yes, we, are, we actually, we All actually right. would like to, but you have also mentioned something mm. very important. Right. You mentioned the issue of palliatives. Right. Oil and gas under the Buhari administration. That's on one-on-one -on -one with the Minister of State Petroleum Resources. The people don't realize in Nigeria that a gas cylinder has a manufacture date and an expiry date, expiry date. So a lot of expired cylinders were also brought into the country. One on one, Friday, 10.30 p.m. on NTA. Nationwide and welcome to Ibadan. The Nigerian Army Day celebration will continue to remain significant in the arts of the Nigerian Army and indeed the country with the sacrifices made to preserve the unity of the nation, especially now with the task of bringing the challenges of insecurity to its knees. This is the message sent by the Chief of Army Staff through the General Officer Commanding 2 Division to the Interbrigade and Civil Secondary School Quiz Competition held in Ibadan, or your state capital. Larry Bilei has details. The quiz competition between brigade and civil secondary schools is part of the programs to mark this year's Nigeria Army Day celebration. The participating schools contested keenly with each other, answering questions posed to them in subjects such as English, mathematics, and current affairs. In his message at the program, the General Officer Commanded 2 Division lamented the dwindling performance of students in schools. Over the years, the standard of education has been falling. This could be attributed to several factors, which among other things is the unwilling attitude of our children to study. Vis a vis, the unchallenged attitude is treated by some instructors and even parents. At the end of the quiz competition, Command Secondary School Ibado came first with 32 points. Oye Mekun Grammar School, Akure second with 31 points. 
while Imagwero College Senior School, Benin Edo State, came third with 30 points. Uh, I, I was really challenged with the quiz. I will get to learn a lot from the soldiers because they are working hard to protect our country. The Army Day celebration is one of the major days in the Nigerian Army calendar, set aside annually to honor fallen heroes of the nation's army during conflict or war in Ibadan. Larry Belehi, NTA News. Plans are on the way to replicate the construction of the federal government smart school project in each senatorial district of Oyo State to enhance quality learning system. Governor Sheyi Makinde stated these during an interaction with the entourage of the Universal Basic Education Commission at his office in Ibadan. Kayode Oladushu reports. Commending the Universal Basic Education in Oyo State for uplifting the basic education and better education delivery for all, PESDA, an initiative of the state government to put an end to out-of-school children in Oyo State. Governor Makinde maintained that his administration will align with all the available procedure to run a better basic education system in the state. For us, an example of uh, how the state, you know, the government to ensure that uh, uh, the programs and the policies actually uh, uh, get the desired results at the local level. Appreciating the proactive step of your state government on the implementation of various projects facilitated by the Commission, Permanent Secretary, we Federal Minister of Education, says the team is pleased with the level of work done so far. People are doing extensively members of your team on all facets of our collaborations and uh, to ensure that in the day that our people will have access to education at the basic level. Our hope is to see how we can change the face of basic education in Nigeria. The delegations of the Federal Ministry of Education and Universal Basic Education Commission were in Oyo State to inspect the Smart Model School a project of the federal government to boost information communication technology in public schools across the country. In Ibadan, Kaido Ladushu, NTA News. It's time to rejoin Najatu in Abuja studios for the continuation of Nationwide. Thank you. We're talking electoral matters now. Violence against women during elections and the perceived non-inclusion of women in mainstream politics by political parties are major concerns for the Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn. To address these issues, the minister has led a delegation of women to INEC headquarters for possible areas of collaboration. Mayor Ugidi reports. <laughs> Active and visible are the polling booths, but almost invisible in the governor's circle. That is the story of the Nigerian woman. This figure in the 2019 voter register shows their number. Female veteran politicians on the move to reinvent the political wheels for more inclusion and INEC's involvement may hasten the process. If INEC being the umpire to advise our political parties, this can be one of the conditions that unless gender equality comes to play, registration will not be accepted. For INEC, talking about inclusivity is like preaching to the converted. Then the converted needs to go for evangelism. We will continue to encourage parties um, to also ensure affirmative action, particularly in the nomination of candidates for elections. On violence, uh, the best way to tackle this problem is to enforce the laws of this country. We are not penalizing offenders enough. While INEC gets involved in the E for She campaign, Women must also get involved for the Come and Register for Voters Card campaign. The INEC chair reminds the women in a lighter note. Mayor Ogede, NTNs.
The chairman of the All Progressives Congress 2021 Anambra Governorship Primary Appeals Committee, Governor Mohamed Inouye has appealed to aspirants who participated in last Saturday's primary election to demonstrate the true spirit of sportsmanship as Democrats and accept the outcome of the party's appeals committee in good faith. Addressing journalists after the committee's meeting at Buhari House, the National Secretariat of the APC, Governor Inoue Yahya said party members should respect the outcome of the primary election as an important pre-election process and urge them to work in unity for the party's success during the November 6 governorship election. He said the appeals committee will do justice to the five petitions it has received. But getting any issues that arose out of that election uh, in contention for discussion, dialogue, and a solution. And I think uh, we've already gotten petitions from the candidates, and we shall trust them and find solution to all uh, 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 claims or observations made by the uh, contestants. Five petitions are with us right now, and. Uh, We've given time within which we shall conclude with them. Secretary John James Zapanudoede inaugurated the appeals committee on behalf of the Governor May Malapuni led caretaker and extraordinary convention committee. Deficit hostel accommodation in universities identified to be responsible for lack of concentration in studies and indulgence in illicit behavior is being tackled head-on at the University of Abuja in its desire to remodel the institution to make it a world-class and the pride of the nation. This is the thrust of a media briefing by the Vice Chancellor on various efforts at uplifting the only federal university which has the entire nation as its catchment area. So much is also being invested, so much is being invested on in equipment and other infrastructure critical to the provision of conducive learning. Right. We want people when they come in to feel that they are in a worthwhile campus, in a world-class campus, in a campus that you feel it's a place for learning and teaching. You know, that the environment itself should stimulate you, should stimulate your, 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 your zeal to learn. While security in the school is given topmost attention, every course is to have industrial partners for chances of students to be engaged for a chance of students to be engaged after graduation as well as the construction of a mini stadium considered to boost the institute the institute's recreational aspect where students can compete with peers globally and up next is sports update Welcome to Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. Let's begin with football as the Super Eagles of Nigeria say they are ready to take on their Mexican counterparts in an international friendly on Sunday morning. The team, dominated by home based players, have been training in Los Angeles ahead of the match with coach Genotro already with the team. NFF president Amaju Pinnick, who visited the team at their camp, urged the players not to see themselves as Team B. The FIFA Council member also assured the players that more friendly matches have been lined up for them. Away to Euro 2020, where the concluding quarterfinal matches will be decided on Saturday, with Czech Republic and Denmark facing off in the first match of the day, scheduled for five in the evening, while attention was shifted to the Stadio Olimpico in Rome, Italy, three hours later as Ukraine and England will be fighting for a place in the last four. And finally, Germany midfielder Tony Cruz has announced his retirement from international football. The 31-year-old 2014 World Cup winner won 106 caps for the national team, scoring 17 goals and providing 19 assists. His final game came in the 2-0 loss to England in the last 16 of Euro 2020. And that does it on Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. <laughs>
sports update concludes the news on Nationwide. Do remember to be a star and stand with NTA against rape and rapists. Thanks for watching. I'm Naja Atsitijani. Keep observing COVID-19 protocols.